Hello, survivors and thrivers! My name is Beth, and I'm here to talk to you about all the knitting adventures I've gotten into this week. Today, it's cold, so I'm wearing penguins. I live in the Chicago suburbs, and I am the mother of four, and they're all adult. It's been about three weeks since I uploaded an episode, and I have a lot of new stuff. I have taken a couple of whips and put them to the side. I've finished something and I am almost finished with something else. And I've got some personal challenges that I'm working on. So stick with me. I've got a lot to show you today. Before I get too deep into the stuff that I have and have newly received, I want to talk about an upcoming knit along. Now, I've never been one to really join in a whole lot on knit alongs just because I don't like deadlines. Who does, right? So here's what's exciting. There are multiple podcasts who are hosting a knit along for the Marie Wallen Burra Cowl. And some have extended it to other patterns of hers and are doing different things. I'm gonna stick with the Burra Cowl. I'm gonna do that cowl myself. And it is a year long knit along that starts in January. So I haven't yet decided what my rules are going to be and how I'm drawing for prizes or anything like that, or even what the prizes are. Um, I know some of the other podcasters who will be listed here. <laughs> um, I have seen some of theirs and what they're um, planning to do, but um, I still have to kind of make some decisions on what I'm going to do. So anyway, Get ready for that if you like a knit along. I believe a lot of these guys are offering to allow double dipping. So, you know, this is going to be like quintuple dipping or however many there are. So you can just enter everybody's with a bunch of hashtags or as some of them might have um, in their Ravelry groups you have to enter. Um, I don't have a Ravelry group. Should I? Comment below if you uh, think it would be a good idea for me to have that. I, I, The reason that I don't is because I don't like um, how you communicate on Ravelry. I, it reminds me of like the dinosaur... Um, <laughs> In the 1990s, I feel like I was communicating on the forums on um, AOL and stuff like that, where, you know, you in order to see, like, what the original post was that someone replied to, you have to scroll way back up and I, it's just, I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm sorry. I, not a Ravelry communication fan. I'm going to start with a finished object that I have. What? I have a finished object? I do. Not just one sock, but two. <laughs> These are, I'm going to just, I'm going to do a close up with one of them so that you can see my, this is my vanilla sock. It's got a, I believe it's a 14 round cuff, 90 round leg, um, a heel flap and gusset, and oh, can you see this lovely thing sticking out? I'll be talking about that. Anyhow, um, I like to rib the top of my foot, and this is a one by one rib. The the socks my the socks on my feet right now. Those are um, a one by three rib, and so when I pulled those out to wear um, after Thanksgiving this year, 
I decided that on the socks that I'm currently knitting, I'm going to do a one by three rib on that too. So excited about that. I'm actually finished with that part of it. I'm onto the toe, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. This sock is made from Western Sky Knits. Um, it is her, I believe it's called a sparkle sock base. It does not have any nylon in it. And so what I decided to do is I held it together with a nylon thread. This. And I don't know if you can see it across the screen because it's so tiny. Um, but it, it is hanging down from there. Um, <laughs> and that was my problem when I was knitting. I was, I did it for the entire, I started at the heel flap and held it together with the yarn from the heel flap through the gusset all the way down the foot and into the toe just because I knew I had bought two um, spools of this thread knowing that I'm, I was doing these socks two at a time. So I knew that I would need two spools of thread. The thread was really hard to see because it's a black thread and it's so skinny. So there were times when I'd be knitting along and I'd be like, hey, wait a minute, is that black thread there still? And sure enough, it wasn't. And I had to, I would tink back and fix it. Um, but I don't know if that's going to add the strength that I wanted to the foot um, or if that was just a waste of time. I have places in these socks where the yarn is just sticking out, or not the yarn, but the, the thread, the nylon thread. So never going to do that again. But alas, we learn from our knitting experiences and we move on. We'll see. I've worn them a couple of times. Um, maybe it will turn out that this was exactly what I needed. Maybe not. So, um, if I find out anything as I wear these over the next couple of months, I'll let you know. Anyhow, that's it for this pair of socks, my other one that I'm doing. I'm down to the toe. So here we are getting into whips. Um, I'm down to the toe on this pair of socks and I'm so excited. I would have finished this except for the fact that I was worried I was gonna run out of daylight for recording. So I thought, I'm just gonna start recording and I'll if I finish these socks before I finish editing, I will put the picture in right here and now so that you can see the finished product. But this, is the sock that I'm working on now. This colorway is called Country Christmas and it is by Desert Vista Dye Works. And I am just loving how these colors go together on this sock. And I am loving the texture of the foot. Speaking of which, my daughter came home for Thanksgiving and she told me that she and her friend like to play a drinking game while they watch me. <laughs> because apparently I say the word texture a lot. So I can understand why you would <laughs> do such a thing. I don't think she was entirely serious about that. I don't know, maybe she was. Hi Shannon. Hi Shannon's friends. <laughs> anyway, A Country Christmas, Desert Vista Dye Works, 
I am loving this. They will be done by the next time I see you. So for those of you who have been around for a while, you may be noticing that I am not showing my Vesper with a twist. That's the brown sweater I was doing bottom up and my Ingrid sweater that's top down. I have put those on hold until I finish my Christmas knits. So I will be talking about those hopefully next time because I should be finished with my Christmas knits by the time I podcast the next time. I have a deadline in place for this next whip because my principal emailed, I think it was yesterday, saying that we were going to have an ugly sweater day at school and that will be December 21st. So I'm excited to wear this next whip for that. I am working on Fallow. It is a top-down sweater by Anne Michelle Phelan. Um, here is a picture of the back of it. So lovely black and white picture always does things such great justice, does it not? But I have my swatch that I did. Now I used a couple different size needles so you can see that this is kind of coming out on the sides. So um, use smaller needle up here, larger needle down here. And so I love how the reindeer are coming out on this. And <laughs> this was my, I, I did, it's almost like I could make it a cuff or something. I, this, I could start my sleeve this way. Anyway. <laughs> This yarn is Maelstrom, Maelstrom Fiber Arts, and it is in their Zebra DK, which is 100% Peruvian Highland wool, and um, it is this lovely green that is super grinchy, and so... My idea is that the reindeer in the middle will have a red nose. And I was thinking that one I will name Max after the Grinch's dog. I'm so excited about this. <laughs> so here is my start. Um, as I was working on this, I was surprised at how much this yarn pooled, the zebra part of it. Um, so all of the black is kind of together and, you know, this is, so the way this sits, this will be the front of the sweater. But when I first was doing it, this was the front and this was the back. So I was like, whoa, I'm always gonna know where the front of the sweater is because it's the one that's all green. But if it really is like this, then I just have to remember that the black is on the right. That makes sense. That'll work. Either way, I'm always gonna know where the front is as long as I can remember something simple like that. So I haven't quite gotten to the color work yet. Um, this is like, as soon as I Kitchener up that toe, this is the next thing I'm focusing on because I have a deadline. Um, oh, I didn't say the contrast colorway. The contrast, the, um, the little reindeer will be from this, um, which is Nerdy Sheep Fiber Works. And it is a 50-50 blend of wool and alpaca. And it's the natural colorway of the animals. Do animals have colorways? It's the natural color of the animal. <laughs> and that's it for fallow. I'm excited. Next time I should be wearing it when I podcast. And that along with my whatever socks I finish because I have other socks that I want to finish.
before Christmas. So I got a lot of, I mean, you know, last year I did a whole lot of hat knitting for Christmas. I made all of my students hats and there were, there were four really easy ones and one very difficult one. <laughs> So I, I, that was my own doing. I, I did, I had four boys as students and one girl. So the girl's hat was a much more complicated knit. It was a double knit. It was reversible. It was amazing. I should have chosen something different. <laughs> so that I think is why I'm not doing gift knits this year because Last year, it just, it got to be overwhelming. And you know what I say about deadlines? I feel like deadline could be the other word for the drinking game. I don't like deadlines. <laughs> Anytime I say that, take a drink, woo! <laughs> so that's it for whips. Or no, it's not. No, it's not, I've got another one. I am really, really excited about this one. I saw, okay, so I'm gonna preface this. I'm, I'm looking around to see if I have other whips because I feel like I, I did not organize this morning, if you can't tell. Is that not obvious? <laughs> so anyway, my knitting group and I went to um, both Woolen Company and Elgin Networks on the same day. Um, so it was almost yarn overload. There, there was so much and I bought so much. <laughs> so our first stop was at Woolen Company. And so what I did is I walked the entire store. And for those of you who, who don't live in the area and have never been there, it, the amount of yarn they have is staggering. It's, you walk in and you're like, oh, where do I start? <laughs> so I walked the, the, the store around all of it and just made a loop to see Okay, where do I want to focus? So along my walk around the store, I saw a sample in the store of, I don't know if I have the picture of it. It is called Mosaic Plaid Wrap. It is by Michael Vlodman or Vledman, not sure how to pronounce that. Okay. This beautiful wrap was in the store. It was exactly this, um, the one she's wearing. I love this for not only the color work, but also there is, get ready, texture in it. And so, I am excited about what this will look like in my color choices because I kind of reversed things and I chose a dark color for my main colorway. So the sample was made in Hedgehog Fibers Sporty Singles. I might have splurged a little. So this lovely color, oh my gosh, that is coming out perfectly on screen. I hope, I hope it shows, I hope when, when it comes out like on YouTube, it shows as well as I'm seeing it right now. I've got to fix my hair. Sorry. Um, <laughs> But this colorway is, well, first of all, it's 100% merino wool. Um, 
Why doesn't it say the colorway? Am I blind? Mm -mm -mm. Oh, purple rain. It's like the smallest letters on here. Purple rain. And I'm going to need to keep my glasses on so that I can see the colorways for the, the other colors. Um, my second color is this lovely lavender, which is also coming out perfectly on screen. Hope it's showing there. This color is called Hush. And I like, well, I think looking at it on screen, it looks more pink to me now. Maybe because I'm holding it back. No, it still looks more pink. Yeah, this is much more lavender to me in person than the pink that's showing up on screen. Um, and then I've got this pop of color that I'm so excited about. Now this is like more of a highlighter green than I think it's showing on the screen. It, it looks a little deeper on here, but the colorway is called Shamrock. And these are all Hedgehog Fiber Sporty Singles, all 100% Merino wool. And holy moly, this stuff feels so soft. I did not, I did not swatch because it's a wrap. I mean, unless I'm worried about running out of yarn, which is always a possibility, um, I feel like it's a wrap. I'm not gonna need it to fit right. So I did not swatch at all for this. I did, however, cast on. It has this nice rib to start off with, and it's super small because Really, I just wanted to cast it on, just to be able to say I cast it on. So that's as far as I've gotten on it. I still love how it feels though. I mean, this stuff is soft. So um, I know on the last episode, I talked about the Knitter's Dude which is a cardigan that I am planning to knit for my oldest son. And I have not yet cast it on because I was having trouble getting a gauge. This is something that needs to fit him. So I am gauge swatching for it. And now I need to find my gauge swatch. So this is it. And um, I want to give a shout out to my local knit group friend Terry who took her time at our last um, get together to check gauge for me to make sure I wasn't crazy about what I was seeing and I'm not getting gauge like I have gone down and down and down in needle size and I think I need to do an in-between needle size I don't know I have not gauge swatched since last Tuesday night when I saw her. Today is Saturday. I've been working on that sock nonstop. So that pair of socks, I should say. Um, and so this is my gauge swatch. And I realized too, when I was like looking at the pattern and looking at my swatch, this is the wrong color. Uh, and you know, if I did everything right, it wouldn't be me. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, the first, if you'll notice, these are different, the, these two patterns here, because on the first round of color work, when I was using my size four needle, I reversed the colors. I did the wrong colors. So I realized that as I was going along, I was like, this doesn't look right. What's wrong with this? And then I figured out I reversed the colors. So where I did the white, it should have been the brown. And where I did the brown, it should have been white. So then I did this part the right way. 
And then when I was looking at the pattern, I realized it's not brown here, it's black. So, I mean, at least I'm practicing on a gauge swatch and not on the actual item. So, that's it. Knitter's Dude will be cast on soon. Um, that is all Knit Picks yarn. It is... I can't remember the name of it, but it'll be right here. A hundred percent. It's the same makeup as this stuff. Um, Peruvian Highland wool. Um, so it's a nice sticky yarn. One thing I want to say about the Knitter's Dude that I did not realize before I bought the pattern and the yarn, it is steaked. So there is an experience I get to do. I'm, I, you know, I welcome a challenge. And I, maybe I said that on the last episode about it being steaked. I don't know. But I welcome a challenge. I like to learn new things. I feel like if you're not learning new things as you go on in life, what's the point? I'm finished with whips, but... I have so much that's new to me. I'm so excited to share all of this. So you saw the hedgehog fibers that I kind of splurged on. I also went to Elgin Knitworks and I bought a bunch of yarn there. Did I show that on the last episode? Now I don't remember. Maybe I'm showing you new to me stuff that's not really new to me. I don't think I ever showed this. This I got at Elgin Knitworks. Um, Betsy at Elgin Knitworks had told us that she had some DK sock sets and um, there was a basket and my friend Terry and I kind of tore through that basket and decided what we wanted. This is what I will be knitting. I have never done DK socks before, so I will be looking for um, Terry's advice on that. Um, and I, this is, it's, what do I want to call it? It's not super soft. It's, it's got a little grip to it. Um, you know, I suppose it, it would be stickable. I don't know. <laughs> it, it just feels grippy like that. But it does say there's nylon in it, I think. Let me read. Because Terry said she thought hers didn't have that. Yeah, this says, oh, no. This is 75% wool, 25% polyamide. I don't know how different that is. Um, it does, like I said, it feels a little toothier, a little grippier. Um, this one feels softer. This one feels grippier. So... Who knows? Um, maybe this has the polyamide? I don't know. Anyway, I'm looking forward to making some DK weight socks. I hope they go nice and fast because otherwise why bother with the DK weight? Am I right? Next, I am planning to knit Letho by Natasha Hornby. My main color will be this green. I like how it has these um, neps in it. Is that what you call them? Um, it's got little fluff of different colors. This is Universal Yarn Deluxe Worsted Tweed. They're tweedy bits. That's what they are. Um, this is 90% superwash wool, 7% acrylic, and 3% viscose. It was very affordable. I bought seven skeins of it, and it was right around $100. So, super affordable. Um, and for the contrast, the back geometric part, I'm going to use this purple. So, but I do like how these colors play together. Um, 
uh, maybe more red is how the purple is showing up. This is very, I would call this very, a purpley purple. And it, it looks almost more magenta on the screen. Um, this colorway is called Raisin. This one is called, it's called Hidden Inside the Skein. Oh, there it is, it's Pine. So Raisin, Pine, and there is a third color in this. So I wanted to go with something more neutral. So this gray is my neutral color. And that colorway is called Smoke. So um, I am going to love that sweater. I know it already. Um, <laughs> I'm excited about casting this on. It starts at the sleeve and you knit it, I think, sideways. I don't think it goes from side to side because I know there's something about in the back that it's like a, I, I think you knit out, I don't know. Every time that I have started to read the instructions on this, I've been looking for how do I swatch? Because there's brioche in it and there's other stuff. And I know the only reason that I know you start at the sleeve is because it starts out talking about this brioche stuff. And that's what's on the end of the sleeve. And I'm like, well, I don't want to do a brioche swatch as my main swatch. I want to do a stockinette swatch. So I don't know if I want to put some of the color work in it or I don't know what I want to do. I But I feel like I keep getting distracted because it's a long pattern. It's a lot to read through and I'm not sure where to go with this, but it will happen. Um, I think probably Letho and the Knitter's Dude I will be working on around the same time. Possibly along with finishing up Vesper with a twist and um, the Inger, Inger? Ingrid. Ingrid sweater. I am going to get into my Nitty McPurly um, day one. I'm about to show it so if you haven't seen it because you're behind on opening yours or don't want to yet, close your eyes because this is day one and I feel like it's showing up a lot brighter on the screen than it feels in real life. It seems more muted in person and it looks very bright. So anyway, I think this is a beautiful color. I have not um, started her pattern. I am thinking about doing something else with this because I also have the chicken lady, um, chicken lady fiber arts. Is that what she calls herself? Anyway, chicken lady. I have her advent and that is a 12 day advent. And it is also DK weight yarn. So I'm thinking I might do a little mashup of those two and make it into like, a lap blanket or something like that. So I think that would be fun. Um, so my next one I have is day two from Nitty McFurley. And this, I will say from everything that I have seen of this one, um, it shows a lot whiter than it is. This is, um, in person, it is a very muted pink. So I feel like 
doing this to this together. It's a nice combo. Um, day three of Nitty McPurly is this color, which oddly seems darker on screen. Um, this looks more Kelly green. And I, I feel like in real life, it's, it's almost tealish. Not, that's an exaggeration. I don't know. But colors don't always show the same way they are. But I do like the idea of pink and green together. So I think that'll be nice. Um, and for anybody who has um, the Nitty McPurly Advent, she's got patterns that come with it and the first pattern is for striped mittens and I think I think that could knit up really cute and I am looking forward to seeing them because I believe at least one person I follow is making them um so I I may be wrong about this because she didn't say anything on her vlogmas which segues perfectly to someone I want to promote. Um, Selfish Knitter is doing a Vlogmas, so please go give her some love. She is new to YouTube. She is doing a fantastic job of just you know setting things up she did an intro she did a day zero she did a day one um, I'm trying to remember did I was there a day two already I don't remember um, but she's doing a great job she I mean vlogmas for me is just too much I <laughs> I honestly, I thought about doing it. I, I thought about doing it and calling it Knitmas because rather than vlogging, I would be sitting here talking about it and showing my Advent stuff. So Selfish Knitter, look her up, give her a follow, give her a like, comment on her videos. I'd love to see her pushed up there in the YouTube algorithms because I, I think she's doing a great job. And she has been my cheerleader from the very start. So thank you, Colleen. <laughs> Next, I want to talk about my stitch marker advent. This is here. I'll, I'll show you the cute box. So I've opened days one, two, and three. This is um firefly notes stitch marker advent calendar and that was sitting here on the shelf for a long time and it's time to take it out so day one was this spool of thread and if it doesn't come out here on video well i will do a picture because um I already took pictures on the very first day, so I know those came out just fine. Um, so if you're seeing pictures instead of the stitch markers, that's because the stitch markers didn't come out as well as I would like on video. I can see that there's a bit of a glare. So this is day two, this button. And then day three was a cute little clothespin. So I'm excited that I will have all these new things. Oh, I didn't even realize this is not a stitch marker. It is a progress keeper. The other two have the whole stitch marker ring on them. So I just noticed that now. I am having the best time getting all these things knit. I feel like I'm more productive now with my knitting 
than I was before. And it, I think it's thanks in large part to the knitting group that I'm part of here locally. Um, I, I want to give a special shout out to all of them, Julie, Terry, and Chris. You guys have been great in supporting me with um, all of the knitting that we're all doing together. And I, I'm very thankful to you guys for accepting me into your group when you just met me at a little fiber meetup. And I'm so happy that I have this time with you guys that I can knit together and chit chat and talk and go through life together. So thank you so much. And thank you to everyone watching. I appreciate all the likes, the comments, the subscribes. I bid you a good winter season. I hope you all are enjoying everything that you're working on. I hope you're having good times with your families and friends during this holiday season. And whatever holiday you celebrate, I hope you celebrate and enjoy every last bit of it. And I will see you on the next episode. Keep surviving and keep thriving. Bye.